Yo, what is up guys? We're actually back with a new part of what if Ichigo attained Bankai early or got Bankai early. And now basically, I know I actually have not up, you know, updated this series in a while. And this is why I'm actually making this series because I'm going to be you know, closing all my old series so I can start fresh and just keep going with the new series so I don't have to worry about do a gold series so this would actually be the finale part of this series so pretty much where i left off left as last episode is basically uh right after aizen would uh put down not put like kill but basically he'd fold all of the captains and pretty much he'd try he'd get into his fight with yamamoto now after he pretty much get in his fight with yamamoto it would literally end the same with um pretty much with um, yamamoto using Hado number 96 ito okaso and pretty much sacrificing his arm in order to basically try to kill aizen but we all know this doesn't actually go to plan not even in the canon verse so pretty much um once i like once aizen is saved from the hojoku from basically getting destroyed by Hado number 96 but i definitely think aizen would have survived uh, you know, um, Ichigo would pretty much, uh, take this, you know, take his chance to basically, uh, come in here and holify, basically, uh, using a Getsuga Tensho. Now, pretty much, Aizen will go all, go on about saying his Getsuga can never reach him, and that you're just pretty much too weak, so might as well give up. And Ichigo would get a little mad at this, and they would, you know, he would go to swing at, you know, at Ichigo. And the theme song would be playing and stuff like that. You know, the Stand Up Be Strong song. And pretty much, uh, you know, what Aizen would do, he would do the most Black Air Force energy moment. He would literally stop the blade with his finger. Not his middle finger, not his ring finger, not his thumb, not his pinky, but with his pointer finger. Like, damn, that's some Black Air Force energy. Now, pretty much, after Aizen would stop his blade, he pretty much uh, would, like, grab some of his Ryatsu, which would kind of scratch him, like, scratch his shoulder. He would grab it and pretty much say, you know, he would compliment the Ryatsu, saying, it's just as I planned. Now, Ichigo would be confused, saying, you know, well, what do you mean? Now, in this timeline, I'm not going to have Ishin pretty much interrupt Aizen. So, Aizen's going to say, you're a Shinigami human and a, and he would pretty much say Quincy and Half Hollow. Now, pretty much uh, Ichigo would be surprised at this, but Aizen would quickly show him, like he would appear right in front of Ichigo and go to stab his throat. Now, it looked like after like a shockwave would happen and everyone would be recovered, Ichigo would look at his whole like body. Now, the thing with his body is it would be turning kind of bluish. And Aizen would say, just as I predicted, uh, Blood Veen. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, your unawakened Quincy power came and saved you when all your other Ryatsu was depleted, just as I planned. <clears throat> uh, pretty much, Ichigo would say, you mean like Uyu? I don't think I'm related to him. Uh, Aizen would pretty much say, yes, you are actually related to uh, you know, Ishida Uryu, they're actually his cousin, uh, pretty much, uh, Ichigo would say, what are you talking about, you know, my dad nor my mom don't actually have any Shinigami powers, nor any whatever Quincy powers you speak of, and pretty much Aizen would go on about saying that actually Ichigo's mom is a Quincy, and Ichigo's dad is a Shinigami, and in this time, he'd pretty much go over everything that was stated in Everything But The Rain, volume number 63. Now, 63, I think? No, it's 60. <laughs> I think it's 60, but basically after Aizen would go over this moment, Ishin would pretty much come out and he would be a little late. Let's just say he tripped. <laughs> nah, just kidding. But basically, Ishin would come in and Ichiko would have learned the truth already, so it would have been a little late. So, just as I planned. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> but basically, uh, Ishin would come in and pretty much punch Ichigo down into like the alleyways. And pretty much, uh, he would, uh, like Ichigo would say, you know, you don't have to explain anything. And pretty much, Ichigo would finally realize that uh, he's half hollow, half Quincy, and half Shinigami. 
I guess you could say. So pretty much, um, uh, the whole like once Ichigo like would get in a fight with Keen, it pretty much go the same with Ichigo kind of going at his limit for his powers. You know, he needs to unlock his, you know, his stagnant potential. So pretty much, uh, after you know, um, pretty much Keen would be in a battle with him. Uh, Urahara Kisuke would come up to the you know the fight with like a red type of uh, Hado number four Byakurai, and pretty much him Yuruichi and Ishin would get in the same battle with Aizen and Aizen would still kind of be superior even after all the seals Kisuke put on him but Kisuke would still put the seal that would end Aizen so sooner or later once Aizen is down to his last limits of Hokyoku he will be sealed so pretty much after Aizen and Gin you know open this you know the Senkai mode and Aizen would tell Ichigo that you know um should, you know, you need to unlock your full powers to even match my power. So he's pretty much challenging Ichigo, saying, "Hey, you're not gonna save Karakura Town if you're not gonna unlock your full potential and your full powers." So, if you guys don't know, I'll be linking a video in the description explaining that Ichigo actually did not use his Bankai in the manga, and the only thing he did was merge his two blades into his Shikai. And that he was only kind of just using two Shikai, then he merged his Shinigami and his Quincy Blade together, making his Shikai. So uh, he actually has a Bankai, so pretty much I'm just gonna make his Bankai just be more stronger, maybe give it a 100 times booster. But pretty much, um, yeah, since his Bankai wasn't fully revealed, maybe it'll be revealed in a special chapter coming up August 10th. Be on the lookout for that, by the way. But pretty much, um, once Aizen and Gin would head through the Senkai Mon, they'd be walking through until they'd be. Uh, Gin would pretty much sense the, you know, the cleaner, and so would Aizen. And Gin would say, you know, we should hurry up. The cleaner's here, and pretty much they would stand there. And Aizen would, after a few moments of standing there, would turn around and destroy the so, destroy the cleaner. Uh, my fault. Uh, but pretty much he would destroy the Sokyo, the cleaner. If I ever say Sokyo, Q, I mean the cleaner. So he would destroy the cleaner, and this would pretty much show that he has transcended Shinigami and Hollow to all the fans of Bleach. And once he gained and Aizen would head to the the Senkai Mon, and they would meet up with Ichigo's friends, and pretty much Gin would basically betray Aizen and think he, you know, basically got the fake version of the Hokyoku. And he got the Hokyoku, but since Aizen was already merged with it, you can't really you know, take anything at that point. You kind of just missed your chance there, buddy. Spent all this time just so you can get folded. And then the person, the person you're trying to betray, literally knew you were betraying and let you, let you betray him because he wanted to see what you had in plan. So pretty much after this would happen, Aizen would kill Gein and pretty much Ichigo, which would be, you know, running through with the Garganta or the Don guy with uh, Ishin. Now pretty much... Once he'd be, you know, running through the Don guy and all, uh, you know, um, Ishin would pretty much tell Ichigo to stop. And once they'd stop, uh, you know, he would tell Ichigo about the, you know, him being able to train for three months. So pretty much Ichigo would, you know, go in there to basically go for his final Getsuga, but he realized he shouldn't really go for that. But He'd, you know, he'd be, uh, he would see Tensa's on Getsu, and he'd be drowning there. And pretty much Tensa's on Getsu, or this hooded man, would tell him that this is your inner world, you know, you should be able to breathe, you know, calm down, homie. So, pretty much, um, once this would happen, Ichigo would find his way to breathe underwater. And his, the, the weird thing is, is in a world changed. It used to be, you know, tall skyscrapers which reached to the heavens, and it'd be pretty sunny out there. And the old man would be complimenting the weather, but the old man was nowhere near around, and all he saw was the drowned version of Karakura Town. Now, Tensei Sangetsu, being able to read Ichigo's thoughts, would say, exactly, you know, uh, in your time of Aizen's, uh, for you know the four months between before you know uh, the war you became more scared of Aizen for some reason and this world actually turned into Karakura Town and pretty much Tensei Sangetsu would have like a mad he'd be pretty mad you know 
you can't like it's understandable you can't just go and then despair and then leave this hole in a world and you know it's drowning come on pretty much tensos are get to would say that you know this place used to be filled with the skyscrapers of hope now look at this you know it's underwater after pound pounds liters of liters of just rain so pretty much uh ichigo would you know after you know tense zangetsu would pretty much put his hand through ichigo and rip out zangetsu or white zangetsu pretty much ichigo would basically have his dialogue with zangetsu saying are you zangetsu since you said it yourself right pretty much uh if you guys don't know what i'm talking about in the ichigo versus inner hollow or white zangetsu literally the white zangetsu said you know basically ichigo would ask for his old man zangetsu and pretty much zangetsu would say i am zangetsu before you know they had their fight so pretty much ichigo would remember this and pretty you know he would think he would be thinking he's pretty stupid how did he miss this but pretty much uh you know tensa zangetsu and zangetsu would form and pretty much they would train they would start training they they wouldn't go for the whole final getsu get and pretty much ichigo just wants to get stronger all right he realized that you know after let's just say tensa zangetsu would tell ichigo the consequences of using the final getsu get and the old man zangetsu like tensa zangetsu would tell that turn back into the old man so pretty much uh, when this would happen, the old man Zangetsu would tell Ichigo that uh, you know your past and you know your powers. And so pretty much uh, the old man would tell Ichigo how you know Yuhabach came a thing and the whole Yuhabach being the Soul King's son and stuff like that. And pretty much would uh, give Ichigo his Zanpakuto, his real Zanpakuto, his Zangetsu. Now pretty much uh, once he would hand over the blade. They would pretty much merge with Ichigo because your Zanpakuto is yourself, so it would kind of just, it would, uh, you know, Ichigo would become himself, his true self and power. So pretty much, uh, you know, after that, that would mark the three months of them just training and Ichigo getting his true Zanpakuto in the end. Now, uh, this would also gain Ichigo full break. Now, if you guys are wondering, Ichigo just learned full break. Ichigo always had full break, he just manifested it. So yeah, he would still have the full big marks. So pretty much Ichigo would wake up in the dawn guy and it would just be, you know, right when Ishin would pass out or a little bit before Ishin would pass out from Ryatsu exhaustion. So pretty much Ishin would see the look in Ichigo's eyes and know that he could definitely defeat Aizen. So pretty much uh, Ichigo would be in a new form and he would kind of have his usual uh, clothes from when he came down from the Ryu or the soul palace even though uh it doesn't have any oaken i just wanted to give him his outfit because it is mad trippy no cap but pretty much if you guys don't know the outfit i'm talking about it is the outfit that's in my thumbnail for the first part of what if naruto was ichigo's reincarnation so yeah if you want any reference there it is so ichigo would carry um ishin on his back or his shoulder and he would head towards the end of the garganza now once he would head out the garganza you know, uh, he would, you know, pretty much put down Ishin after, you know, seeing Aizen. He would become there and see Aizen. And pretty much Aizen would say, is that you, Kurosaki Ichigo? And pretty much, uh, he, you know, Aizen would recognize Ichigo and see his immense power. It seems to see all his Ryatsu have been fully unleashed. Kind of like Kanpachi when he went Bankai. So pretty much, uh, Ichigo would say, you know, let's take this somewhere else. And pretty much Aizen would go in the same dialogue saying you, you if you're not strong and stronger then you can't actually suggest a landscape change something like that before Ichigo would then grab him by the face and pretty much you know force him to go to a different location now once Ichigo and Aizen had been moved to a different location they would pretty much start their fight with Aizen's sword clashing with Ichigo and Ichigo just basically having learned in that Don guy his dual wielding he would have been, I guess he would have been a little bit okay. Three months of dual wiggling is not that bad. But pretty much he would be fighting. And after this would happen, he starts to clash. And pretty much Ichigo would back up before charging, like putting the two blades in cross formation. Before he would do Getsuga Jujisho. 
So after he would use this attack, there would be a cross beam of light from his blade. Now this would be the Getsuga Jujisho, the Getsuga the Piercer of Heaven, cro Piercer Cross Blast of Heaven, I think. Uh, something like that. It's basically like a Getsuga horizontally and ver vertically. So Aizen would be quite surprised by this uh, power release and he would use a Bakudo 81 Danku. Now pretty much Aizen knowing that he pretty much has to put down Ichigo here and now, here and there, he would then start to go through some mumbling before he would use Hado number 99, Goyo Tenmetsu. Now pretty much once this would happen, he would start to dive with the Goryo Tenmetsu after pretty much diving with the Goryo Tenmetsu behind him. So he would dive going for a sword swing and he would basically go to split in half. Now pretty much what would happen is Ichigo would use one of the Quincy techniques to basically create a zone of blood V. So anything in a zone will not affect him. Pretty much I think Yuhabak used this against uh, Ichibe in their fight. So pretty much he would use this and he wouldn't be affected by it and with his high speed regeneration in balance with his uh, blood V, he would not you know, he would uh, get hit by the attack, then he would regenerate himself. Now Ichigo would say, you know, I'm gonna end this, you know, right here, right now. And he would put his two blades together before he would go, you know, Bankai. Or he would use the Bankai that he used in the manga against Yuhaba. Now pretty much, uh, you know, uh, he would, you know, basically instantaneously appear in front of Aizen. And Aizen's, like, his eyes are out of his head. It's like, how is Ichigo in front of me? Before pretty much Ichigo would split him in half, kind of like how he did to Yuhaba. But pretty much once he would look back to you, Aizen, Aizen would be self, uh, pretty much uh, re healing. And pretty much right before uh, he, you know, Ichigo would appear in front of him or next to him, similar to how you know, he did after he used Mugetsu. And pretty much when Aizen was going to get up and he had his dialogue of saying he's going to end Kurosaka Ichigo, you know, seals would start to pop out of his chest. Now, once this would happen, pretty much, uh, you know, he would start to get sealed, and he would have his dialogue. I, you know, once Kisuke appeared, he would have his dialogue saying, you know, why do you submit yourself to that thing? And uh, only, um, only, you know, true, true winners, uh, true victors ask about how the world should be, not how the uh, the world currently operates. Before he pretty much be sealed. Now, once he was sealed, this would pretty much end the whole you know, you know, Karakura Town thing, or the whole Karakura art, Karakura Town arc thing, fake Karakura, Karakura, whatever it is, the, the Winter War is finished pretty much. So pretty much, I said pretty much, I think three times, Ichigo would not lose his powers over this time skip, and once this would happen, you know, Ichigo would have his training arc. So basically what I mean is over this time, he would start to train and train, learn stuff like keto abilities not much but just you know up he would learn all the keto abilities but he's not mastered at them now if you guys are wondering why am i giving ichigo's keto abilities since he has zangetsu he's mostly a zanjutsu user he doesn't really need keto so pretty much um once i did this once i am having ichigo do this after that time step or kind of be like two years like literally the day before you hotbox and gates Ichigo would probably be thinking until he realized, you know, I wonder what, you know, what happens to Aizen. Since he heard from Urahara that Aizen was going to have uh, a 18,000 year sentence, but apparently he got 20,000 due to him mouthing off at Central 46. So, pretty much, um, Ichigo would be like, yeah, I wonder what he said. <laughs> but basically, um, once this would happen, you know, he'd be, uh, over this time, he'd always have these questions from when before Aizen was defeated. He said something about his soul king. I mean, I wonder what the soul king is, he said to himself. He then head over to Urahara's shop before he would ask Urahara to open a, uh, you know, Senkaimon to uh, basically soul society. So, Kisuke would do just that, and once he'd open the Senkaimon, uh, not each girl would walk through. Now, if you guys are wondering what I'm doing, I want to have a dialogue between. I want to have dialogue between Ichigo and Aizen when Aizen is sealed and all, because I actually wanted a 
part where like maybe after Ichigo got his full brain powers and stuff, I wanted there to be a moment where Ichigo visit, visits Mukin and sees Aizen. Because this would pretty much have some great dialogue with Aizen basically saying that, oh, you know, Ichigo, you're a Quincy or something like that. He can, he has many things to say since he is Aizen. So I'm going to have something like that happen here. So pretty much Ichigo would walk through the Senkai mode and he'd walk over to the head captain Yamamoto. Now, pretty much, uh, Ichigo has been doing a lot for, you know, Soul Society, so, uh, Yamamoto would have definitely, you know, let him give, ask for a favor or two. So, pretty much, Ichigo would, you know, walk up into the captain's office, and all the captains would be there, uh, and, you know, all the appointed captains, like Shinji, and any captains that became captains over that time skip would have be there, pretty much. So, after this would happen, uh, Ichigo would ask, you know, Yamamoto, you know, hey, old man, uh, can I, you know, can I ask for a favor? Yamamoto would pretty much, you know, hit his stick on the ground like he usually does, and pretty much uh, start the meeting. Now, once he starts the meeting, Ichigo would ask if he could go to Mukin. Now, pretty much Aizen would, you know, say, why would you want to go to Mukin? Or Aizen, why did I say Aizen? Yamamoto would ask why you want to go to Mukin. Pretty much, uh... Ichigo would say, I, I want to meet Aizen. Now, there would be quite a shocking moment. Ichigo just said he wants to meet Aizen. A few years back, he was the one who wanted to defeat Aizen. Now he wants to meet him. Pretty much the only person who would get why Ichigo would want to meet Aizen is Yamamoto. And pretty much Yamamoto, after you know a few uh, outbursting comments <coughs> from Soifan. Sorry about that. But basically, uh... Um, you know, Yamamoto would allow this meeting to happen since Central 46 members don't really have much power since they haven't been appointed yet. I mean, they technically have, but it's too hard to explain. So pretty much, um, uh, you know, they would uh, put three keys for Mukin to inside Ichigo, kind of like how they did to Kiraku. And Ichigo would be walking down the elevator or the elevator shaft or the elevator shaft would be moving down to the lowest level. And in the little part, small window, he would see all those prisoners there. And he would see, you know, Azashiro Soya and from the light novel, Spirits Are Forever With You. And the other prisoners that there that are like nobles who basically rebelled against soul society and other people like that. So pretty much once the elevator shaft would open, he'd walk up to Aizen's uh, cell. They'd pretty much open it and pretty much they would see Aizen with his whole weird, like, Star Wars mask on his face like no cap that gave me some Star Wars vibes, but pretty much uh, uh, You know Aizen would speak up so you know Ichigo Kurosaki, you know I you know I knew you would come since you know a little bit too fast in my plans But you getting your full power is a little also too fast for you know in my plans as well So it is what it is. I didn't really say that exactly, but I don't want to go into a detailed You know dialogue so pretty much what Ichigo would walk up to Aizen and he'd rip off the part of his, you know, ceiling so he can see. So pretty much after this would happen, uh, Ichigo would ask, uh, after a few questions and stuff like that, Ichigo would ask the main reason, the main question why he's here. Uh, you know, Aizen would pretty much interrupt him and say, you want to know who the Soul King is, right? So pretty much Ichigo would say, yeah, how did you know? Um, and then he would interrupt himself saying, you know, never mind, you always seem to know a lot of things. So, pretty much Aizen would start to give him a story about how the Soul King be became a thing and how the five, you know, generations, the five ancestors basically defeated him. And he would tell him that your ancestor, you know, the Sheba head clan was one of them, one of the five, you know, leaders. So, pretty much, um, after this, after this would happen, you know, Ichigo would realize that he's also part Shiba, so he pretty much realize he literally could become head of the clan, but never mind that. So pretty much, uh, he would ask, start asking questions, and then pretty much after this, uh, there's not much to go over, so he'd start to ask stuff like Forbidden Kido and other details like that. And after this meeting would go, you know, Ichigo would have definitely learned a lot. So after this meeting, Ichigo would have went up, you know, went back home to more than living and the whole Quincy arc would happen now literally it would go straight to canon all right the thing is is Ichigo would have just defeated the opponents either faster or he would have 
seen the stuff happen like when he was in Karinji's jail he would have gotten there a little he would have gotten out sooner but he was still seeing a lot of deaths since he didn't realize the time that only you know if you're Quincy you could get out so pretty much um, the whole Blood War arc would go to canon the light novels would go to canon just Ichigo is slightly stronger now Ichigo would still you know marry or he may just like in canon and they would have the child Kazuhi and in a few days we'll see the special chapters and it'll be quite interesting so pretty much this will be the end of this series i know it's been quite a ride but hey this is the end uh yeah without further ado guys uh peace out